Hi, this is Claire Pretzia from Verity Papery, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this hummingbird card using Gansai Tambi watercolors and a new Hero Art stamp set, Hummingbirds. The first thing I'm going to do is create the hummingbird scene. So I'm going to stamp the hummingbird and flower in Versamark on some Bristol cardstock, and then heat emboss that using the detail black embossing powder. The reason I'm doing this before any other part of the card is because it's watercolor and even if you have a certain palette in mind, which I do, depending on how much water you use and how everything's kind of blending together, the color scheme may end up different. So I really hate to make cards and then color an image later and add that in because a lot of times the colored image won't match. And because I'm not that great at coloring, I really don't like to go spend my time on coloring something and then find the card doesn't match. So I always color the images first and then build my card. So for this little flower, I didn't mask off the little, the little hummingbird beak. I don't know if that's the correct name for it. Um, I didn't mask it off because I could just stamp the flower, add my embossing powder to it, and then use a paintbrush to kind of wipe away those two little lines. So no fancy masking, just wipe the extra embossing powder. After I've heat set that, I'm going to start my watercoloring. So I'm using Gansai Tambi watercolors, and I just think watercoloring is fun. I just find it really interesting. I don't really know what I'm doing all the time. So this is the process of me coloring the hummingbird. I may or may not be doing it correctly, according to some other watercolors who've been doing it for years. Um, but this is how I color it, so what the heck. I'm going to show you how. So first, whenever I watercolor something, I like to add a very light uh, kind of wash of water down, just not a whole lot of water, just a little bit so that when I start adding my watercolors into it, it isn't really stark on the cardstock. It kind of starts blending already because there's a little bit of water there. So I added some water and then I added the lightest green, a very light wash over the entire hummingbird. And then I started adding some of the darker greens near the back of the hummingbird and underneath the wings and where the wings start. And then if you look at the stamp, there's a couple little details here and there. Where, so you can kind of imagine feathers. And then I add a little bit of extra pigment, some of the, some of the darker green there, just because I'm assuming that's where it might be darker. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not someone who colors that often. <laughs> so I'm kind of just guessing where the, the shading would be. So whenever um, I put too much ink down, I can always use my paper towel to kind of lift some of that up. There is technically white watercolor ink, but I know most watercolors don't like to use it because really if you, don't, if you want to lighten something up, just add some water to it and then try lifting it. You'll get a lighter version of that color right there. So for the leaves of the flower and also for the wings of the bird, I added that little bit of water down first and then I added just a little bit of the lightest green and then I kind of spread it all out so I just got a very light wash of that green. For the flower, you might have seen how I actually only added pigment to one leaf and then I kind of added, took pigment from that one leaf to all the other leaves. So it really takes very little pigment when you're doing a very light wash like this to color the other leaves. So I'm just going back in with this little guy. Um, the nose started bleeding into the head there. I added a little bit of black on the beak and then it kind of bled into the head because the head was still wet. So I had to use my paper towel to pick that up. And then I thought that that throat needed to look a little redder. So <laughs> I added some more red in there. And then with the flower, I was worried because the green for the flower and the hummingbird, it's the exact same green. And then the red for the throat and the flower was the exact same too. So I tried adding a little bit of pinkish red to it, but I didn't really like that. So then I decided to add some orange in. And you can see I keep using my paper towel to pick up the color because it's still wet there. So if I use my paper towel, I can actually pick up a lot of the ink, uh, pigment and um, recolor it. 
So I wasn't very brave or bold with my color choices here. I was thinking maybe I should have done purple for the flower, but I was too afraid. I wanted to keep in the same color scheme. So I just add a little bit of, a little bit more red to the throat of the bird, and then I kind of made the flower reddish orange. Not just red, red and orange. Um, and then I didn't actually, I added this at the very end of the card. So uh, this is after I had cut it and everything. I did add a little bit more orange to the, right below the red of the hummingbird because when I make this orange background later, I wanted to bring in some more orange because there was just kind of yellow, so I wanted more orange. I'm going to make the panel for this hummingbird to, you know, set the scene for the hummingbird. So I'm going to die cut it using one of the Heart Infinity dies. I'm die cutting it also out of Bristol cardstock just so it matches the hummingbird, and that's going to create the window. I'm not going to be doing a fancy blended background, um, but I just wanted a little pop of color. I'm really into making blended backgrounds lately, so <laughs> just kind of wanted to do that. I wasn't sure which color, however, because like I said, sometimes when I'm coloring stuff, I get scared about adding too many colors. So I was trying to figure out which color I wanted for the background, and I was thinking purple, or the teal was really pretty, but the bird was already pretty green, so maybe not something green and bluish. And I liked the orange and the yellow the best, but I was like, that's not very brave, that's not very bold, you know? But I ended up using the yellow and the green, uh, or the yellow and the orange, just because I liked it and I wasn't feeling super risky, so <laughs> that's what I went with. I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but the reason I'm using Bristol cardstock is because it can handle watercolor. It doesn't handle it as well as actual watercolor cardstock. Um, it can't handle as much water, but it handles, it handles, you know, a little bit of water coloring like this. And at least compared with the Strabamore watercolor cardstock and then their Bristol cardstock, the stuff that, there's the stuff that you can find at Michael's. Um, I find that the Bristol cardstock is a little bit smoother and it's also whiter. And I wanted a whiter card for this. The watercolor cardstock tended to be a little, a little creamier. I mean, still white but you know there's different whites and this was the white I wanted for this card. So Bristol cardstock also works really well with ink blending. I mean again watercolor cardstock I feel like works better for ink blending but Bristol cardstock can pull it off too. So I ended up using dandelion and soft apricot, apricot, I don't know. I ended up using that to blend my background and you can see I'm using kind of an oddly shaped piece of cardstock there. I did a ton of prep for creativation. I had a bunch of extra negatives um, from this one die cut frame that I had done and I didn't want to throw them away because it's my precious Bristol cardstock. So I figured out that this piece, if I cut it just so, fit the heart perfectly. So that's what I did. And I wanted to point out real quickly, I haven't used Hero Arts dye inks very much for blending. Um, I mostly use the shadow inks, but I, the dandelion ink is a dye ink and it worked beautifully with blending. I was a little bit worried at first, but it worked beautifully. So there were the other three colors that I did end up doing a purple and then kind of a bluish purple background. And I sprayed them all with some white ink, but um, yeah, I was, I was too scared. <laughs> I ended up with the orange one. So now I'm going to stamp the diagonal pattern for the side of the card. I do this a lot lately because I don't have any black washi tape, basically because I can make my own using this uh, stamp. So this is the Candy Stripe Bold Print from Hero Arts. And it's six by six, so it works perfectly whatever direction you want to go. You could actually make it just stripes um, instead of at a diagonal, but um, I like the diagonal. So I inked it up with Versamark. I used my messy Versamark pad because I have two of them. I have one when I actually want to do nice, clean Versamark watermark stamping. And then when I have really dirty backgrounds, I don't want to clean them. Or let's say I did try to clean them, but they're just harder to get some of the ink off of. I have my dirty Versamark pad that still has enough juice in it, but you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stamp very pretty on white cardstock, but you're gonna cover that with embossing powder, so it's fine. So I heat set that, and then I also stamped the sentiment and heat 
uh, emboss that with the same black detail embossing powder. And then I'm just going to adhere that blended background that I made onto the card base. And because it's so, it's got to fit that heart perfectly, I kind of place it right behind that panel. And then I use the panel to kind of guide it down. I trimmed a little bit off the side. And then I want this panel to pop up a little bit. Even though there's no shaker action going on here, I want it to pop up. So I used some yellow foam that I had, super bright yellow. I hadn't found a project for it yet, so I was really happy that this card had some bright yellow going on in it. So I used that, and I die cut the center, the center out using a larger heart die. And then I just removed the backing from the one side. I really love this foam adhesive. You can find it at Walmart, at Joann Fabrics, Amazon, you can find it anywhere. Um, well, maybe not anywhere, but you can find it. You can find it all Walmart, so you can pretty much find it anywhere. Um, and then I just adhered that down. And then to adhere my little hummingbird down, I'm going to take that negative from the heart, and I'm going to use some of that foam to give to add some adhesive behind the hummingbird that's going to be popping up. If I just added adhesive, like normal adhesive. To the wings and maybe the, the little edge of the flower that, that are actually going to be um, sitting flush with the, with the white card base, then the center, that little hummingbird's head and little beak is going to get pressed down into the heart. And I want that to pop up. So I'm just using some of the extra foam and then you know putting in those little nooks and crannies. And then what I'm going to do to adhere the you know, the wings and the tail and the edge of the flower down. I'm going to use some scrappy glue. I really like using this glue because it dries clear. It's not as messy as multi-matte medium. And I found these cheap little bottles online that um, I can refill with the scrappy glue. And they have these detailed precision tips, which don't get stuck, at least with the scrappy glue. And then I just, I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit excited about this glue. <laughs> so I just used that to adhere the uh, hummingbird down. And then I topped it off with some gems, which I didn't film on camera. So I guess you'll just have to guess how I did that. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much the card. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, then you can leave them on the YouTube comment section or on my blog. And supplies will be listed and linked on my blog, and they will be listed in the YouTube description. So thanks for, so much for watching, and have a great day. God bless.